How is it going, everyone? And welcome back to the off-season podcast. If this is your first time ever listening to this show, um, essentially, we're here to provide you your disc golf entertainment from when the season ends until the season begins again. If you're looking for disc golf news, you can find that on Grip Locked on Monday, Tour Life on Tuesday. We're just here to have a good time. We'll talk about some topics. Um, we're going to go through some stories. We have our guest, the rating division game. That mm. was a big hit last year. We'll bring that back again. Um, first, I want to just call out to you, the listeners, if you have a disc golf story, it could be something that happened a decade ago. It could be something that happened at your weekly league last week. It doesn't even have to be that crazy. Just some type of disc golf story. There's a link in the description down below or the show notes if you're listening on audio. Click that link. It'll fill out the Google form there. You don't even have to submit your name if you want to remain anonymous. Um, submit the, the story there, and you might just hear it on next week's episode. That's also where we get a lot of the topics. So if, you, if you're like, I don't have a story. I just want to hear them ramble on about whatever. Send that in there a- as well. And that's where we're going to get a lot of the, the information we, for this can show. I, can I ask so. for, can I mention another thing that I think could be fun for people to send in? Yes. Uh, clips, for, disc golf clips for us to react to. Yeah. Like old disc golf clips, things that we might not have seen. I think that could also, or if you just have a video of your buddy who threw some shot, that's unbelievable. I think well, that could be another funny, funny one. I have this- can you boost Trevor's audio for me? If that, is that possible? We might have to do it. On, we, I think we might be able to do it on our end. Oh. oh, you can boost me. I'm all the way up. Oh, yeah, I am too. Now, Trevor is a little quiet. But no. anyways, um, it, it, according to a guy at USDGC, Trevor just has to learn how to talk as he gets older. And then I don't know how fix. to talk, apparently. Um, yeah. <laughs> you got called out for not knowing how to talk? <laughs> Someone- <laughs> Some guy walked up to – first he walks up to Silas, and he says – and keep in mind, me and Connor are walking 10 feet ahead of maybe not even of Silas. And he knows we're there. And he says to Silas, Hey, I just wanted to give you some feedback on grip locked. And for, for starters, Silas doesn't even edit grip locked. And (laughs) he basically goes on to say that I mumble occasionally. And like, he starts to get into that. And then Silas is like, Oh, well, it's really Connor and whatever. And then, so Silas then jokingly walks up to Connor is like, yeah, basically Connor, your grip lock mix sucks. And the guy then like, hears that walks over to Connor and starts talking to Connor. Now I'm almost standing right next to Connor practically. And he proceeds to then tell Connor that I, um, sometimes I, I mumble, but it's okay. It's something you just learn. You just kind of learn how to talk clear as you get older, which I thought was maybe, really funny. Maybe he's a listener guy, though. And he well, has no idea what you look like. He well, just listens to the podcast. That could be true. No, I, that, I shook his hand at some point. Oh my gosh, what just happened to my audio just then? For like a split introduced, second, it just introduced blew yourself. my eardrums. You learned no, how to I talk like, for a split I, second. I, I met the guy. Um, but I just thought it was funny because the guy looked my age. Like he mm. did not, he couldn't have been, if he was older Great at job. all, he couldn't have been much older. So I was like, I don't know. Also, like when we started the podcast, I was much younger than Hunter is, uh, or I was much younger and Hunter was as well. So like, I'm 25 now. When we started the podcast, Hunter was probably 21. So I was 20, 22. No, you guys were yeah, 23. Because yeah. yeah. I'm 27 yeah. now. So I was 23 back then, four years ago. Young lads, young lads. Yeah. In any case, yeah. So I'm sorry if I mumble, guys. I don't well, listen, I don't mind the feedback. I honestly don't mind like that feedback, whatever. I'm sure it's true. It was the I'll learn how to talk as I get older thing. I'm like, I, well, I mean, you know, maybe we can look into some like hooked on phonics or something for that's you. True. And see, that's true. You know, if we I'm can try to, to put in the work, we're always trying to make these podcasts better for you guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> get Trevor hooked on fine. That's funny. They even still do that. I don't know. I'm gonna start. Uh, with I'm, just being, I'm just gonna be at the end of like, yeah, who knows? That sounds pretty good. <laughs> that's grip lock for you. Um, <laughs> well, one big thing that's been going on here, uh, the past few weeks is our imposter disc golf reality series has officially kicked off. Um, if you're listening to this right now, episode two just dropped. We won't talk about episode two, um, because I know a lot of you haven't had the chance to watch that yet. Um, heck, I haven't even seen the final cut because when we're recording this, it hasn't come out yet. But um, a lot of you haven't had a chance to watch that. But episode one's been out for a little over a week. Huge success from our point of view. Uh, it, it's gone. It's been received very well. But I Viral. thought it'd be fun to get a little behind the scenes insight into the first round that like leading up to even the first voting um, from two people who are on the so, show, Brody so and Trevor. So don't watch this part if you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Good call. If you want to yeah. watch the Imposter Reality Series, um, you can skip forward a few minutes. Uh, but Brody and Trevor being on the show and then Silas and I being behind the scenes with the show um, to kind of give give some insights and stuff. I think what most people want to 
kind of hear about Brody will probably be those first three holes, the, the yeah. legendary Brody and Josh <laughs> toe to toe duel. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I want to say is like the comments were awesome because this is something that I think has a lot of legs. Like this is, I don't believe this is something where it's like, we tried it, you know, Hey guys, let's, you know, let's go out. Let's, let's throw some soap on our chests. Let's find a hill. Let's find a tarp. Let's dive down and see what we can create. Uh, this is something that's going to have multiple episodes and potentially seasons as well. So um, I, I love the comments. A lot of the comments too were actually like constructive criticism, yeah. right? And like stuff that we will take. Like one of the first things that we kind of realized doing this is we definitely need to have more of a backstory of who these people are before we jump into the action. And I think that does matter in a lot of reality shows is like you, at least like maybe in the first, I guess it's a little bit different than Survivor where, you know, well, maybe not because Survivor, you don't know who everyone is right off the bat. They kind of like, it takes a while for them to like show. So I think if we would have filmed people's like who they are, where they play, what their skill level is, what they like to do hobbies, and then been, depending on when they get voted out, you don't have to throw that all in the first episode, but like three episodes down, if Trevor or me are still in, then maybe you can play that bit, right? So it's not like you're just doing like a 45 minutes of who these people are. You can kind of spread it out. But I would say like most of the comments were um, very either positive, super constructive, or just absolutely hated it, which yeah. at the end of the day, that's kind of shows that you got something going there. You made, yeah, you sure. made someone feel something and that's what you really want to do with content. Yeah. And part of the reason, cause obviously when we were planning this out, we were at least on, on for my, my end, I was a little worried of like, how is a reality spin on our normal disc golf videos going to go? Like, how are people even going to react to it? So that's a lot of the like reality series stuff that, now I know how well it was received would have made the show better. A lot of it was like intentionally left out. Sure. Um, part of it being that because there, there has been some people that have attempted a disc off reality type of thing. And one of the downfalls when we watched it was the first like 15 minutes were the intros. And so we were like, if you're in there just for reality and you're in there for the long haul, sure. You want to get to know the backstory of everyone. I was like, but what we want to try to do with this first time is kind of warm our audience up and so that's why we left out a lot of that that now that we know how well it was received would have been great to have had but it was intentional of, of like we wanted to get to disc golf as quickly as possible we wanted to feel like a normal foundation video and have this reality twist to it whereas now that we know how well it's received we can lean into it a little bit harder next season because obviously we can't change the rest of this season um i also there there were some uh comments about the voting as far as like episode yeah. one you could tell exactly what had happened so that changes in episode two Love episode that. two you won't you'll know how who some people voted for but you won't be able to you won't be able to piece it all together so you'll kind of hear the different audio bits from bits and um, different parts you'll see who some people voted for there's even some cuts back to the table so on and so forth so a lot of that actually came from the comments of episode one we were able mm -hmm. to adjust the editing in episode two and you know make sure the people at home were engaged in the story so i think that'll be received well well too but yeah no i was i was thrilled with the comments and the reception of the video in general um, that's something that survivor does so well when you have like the backstabs of someone getting voted out and you're like wait what how did that person get voted out when that person's having their sob story to the camera similar to what we do right when you know josh was talking to the camera at the end of episode one that's where you show where everyone voted and then you could be like oh my gosh as content is still happening but yeah um, okay, well, let, let me like set the stage just a little bit because this I was supposed to fly in the night before and I was supposed to get in, get settled. Then we were supposed to film the next morning. My flight gets canceled. They want me to like stay in Charlotte overnight and like just basically sleep in the, the airport. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. So I basically land in Lynchburg, rent a car drive straight to the course i don't have um at this point in time too i don't have like discs like i didn't bring my disc golf bag because one i gave away a bunch of my discs and also at this point too i don't really know if i'm actually playing disc golf next year or not i'm kind of like up in the air of what i'm doing so i tell hunter 
just grab me some discs and we'll just go from there. So that's kind of like my head's a little scrambled already going into this thing. And um, once I didn't know anything about, and I don't think a lot of people, Trevor, you didn't really know that much about like the rules, how we were going to play the first day, how the money was going to work. Like everyone was pretty much in the blind of like how it all happens. And we didn't really have that much time. Like you guys didn't really edit out that much of us all talking about how we were going to separate at the beginning. Like that was was pretty much brief. That was pretty much all we did. So there wasn't this like, Hey, let's all come together. Let's like have a plan. And you could see too, from the very beginning, there was like a separation, right? Where I basically threw out my idea, which I will stand by it. I think that is the best way of doing it. If you're going to have worse shot, you don't put a really bad player with a really good player yeah. because it the really bad play. Yeah. So you might as well put the two guys that are always going to throw bad and you're probably going to take the shot. You might as well put them together because then one of their shots cancels out. Mikey was not for that. And he was all about vibes and positivity. Yeah. And so there was already this like divide between the group. Well, of- the funny thing is, and it wasn't even on camera, but I uh, went over to Mikey pretty early on and was like, I was like kind of gate getting a feel for everybody just kind of seeing like, okay, like what, are, what is the vibe of these people as far as like, what's their mindset going into things. And the second I went over to Mike even, and even started to whisper words of like, Hey, should we like look out for each other, this or that? He didn't want anything to do with it. He was like, I'm not, I'm not teaming up with anybody. Like I'm on my own, like, like get away from me with this. Like that was his whole thing. And so <laughs> I kind of was just like, and he kind of like said it loudly too, like almost yeah. made like everybody hear it. And I was like, I was like, oh yeah, okay, wrong, wrong guy, I guess. Like I, I thought that was so I funny. thought that was right away off the rip. Like I thought that was very suspicious because I was talking about skill level. It seemed like Trevor kind of jumped on board with me and was like, okay, let's just do PGA rankings ratings, which got a good laugh from everyone, obviously. But at the end of the day, like no one, I don't know, other than Trevor. I really didn't know anyone's skill level at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I even even myself, I I knew some of the people there, but I had never seen most of them play disc golf. I had, I had seen Josh play one time and then I, and then like, even like uh, Mikey and the other Josh, like I very rarely have seen them play disc golf over the years. So I, I don't really know many of their strengths either. Yeah. And a, a couple of things too. First off, I was like kind of nervous going into this a little bit. Cause I had not thrown a disc since D So it was like, <laughs> It was like a month of me not playing disc golf at all. So I, you know, you have all these people that are probably looking at me being like, this guy's going to be our best player. And I was like, guys, I, in my head, I'm thinking I might be absolutely complete trash because I haven't played at all. So I was a little bit nervous with that, but at the very beginning, it was kind of clear to the entire group, or at least I thought it was kind of clear to the entire group that I was probably the best player there. And Trevor had the most knowledge of the course. Yeah. So we were probably going to listen to me when it came to like what throws we should probably do based off of Trevor's knowledge of the course. And I thought that was kind of clear. I don't know if it resonated with everyone. Obviously we no, got well, into it a little. I, a I think you have, you have this mix of some players who are like, you have some players who very much want to get the shot chosen for them because they just don't want to look suspicious in any way. And that's at least one less thing to worry about. And then I think there was just, yeah, a few players who weren't quite on board with that clearly. So let me put it out there too. Once I figured out how the game was played, two things I'm trying to do. I'm trying to win because I love competing. I want to win, but more importantly, like I'm trying to win money for other people too. Right? Like that's, that's the idea is like, if you um, if you aren't the imposter, then you are trying to win money with everyone, right? And so in my mind, I'm just like thinking like, let's just try to, let's come together as a team and get this freaking thing done. And uh, like Trevor said, I don't know if everyone was on the board. Uh, also, I want to say real quick, everyone was yelling at the beginning. I know a lot of people were commenting about was me yelling. yelling. Trevor was yelling. Oh, Mikey yeah. was yelling. Like everyone really that was talking at the beginning was yelling. There's like a lot that, of panic. My, and I'll, I'll put this out there. 
I don't think I've actually ever yelled in a video. <laughs> I, I have I have raised my voice. I have never yelled. I'm just my voice. I think I'd like to. I think I'd like to dispute that. I I, assert, I remember a certain imposter disc golf video when Hunter okay. tried to throw over the water. That was my first time. Probably <laughs> that, was you, that was the that it was, was cold. The it was cold as well, which also has a huge that factor was also in the my imposter. mood. We moved the line down in, in Texas, <laughs> yeah. like halfway in. We had to adjust that was the line. Like the and most like, frustrated. I think there's two imposters. Been. There's got to be two imposters. <laughs> Uh, that was bad. But yeah, it's just I, I get it. I'm already I already have a uh like loud voice just in general. And so I, I did think that was comical. I, I did most of the yelling. I will say that, but I did think it was comical because the first like five minutes, everyone was just going nuts and yelling yeah. and saying, and Mikey's over there, positivity, positivity, <laughs> you know, and everyone, but no one's no, it is what it is. It's fine. So let's just let's just start with whole one here. Let's just let's just get well, think- to whole one. I think or, you got a question. I was going to say to your point, and I don't know if this came across clearly, but like Trevor knew the series was going to be imposter, but because we had like discussed that back, I found notes on my phone where we had a meeting in like January of, Hey, we want to do reality series. Here's a few options. And as soon as we decided we wanted, we, I think imposters was the way, route we want to go. And then we were like, well, one of us needs to be a contestant. And we were like, you know what? I'll host Trevor will be a contestant that was the last time Trevor heard anything. Every mm-hmm. other meeting was just me, Connor, Silas, Brad. Mm-hmm. And we planned them on days when Trevor was on paternity leave, when Trevor was out of the office, or we just met at the coffee shop, or we even went to La Coretta once and just yeah. had plenty, like tons. So Trevor knew no, no rules. I, no, I just got surprised every time. Then the, I don't know if Brody, did you know it was imposter or did you also know? <laughs> you might have mentioned to that me yeah. that months ago, but you guys know me. I'm I'm yeah. not going to remember. Because then of that. outside of that, every other imposter, every other uh contestant didn't even know it was imposter. So mm-hmm. basically what I'm trying to say is everyone was in the dark on pretty much everything. So the way the video was was like when I revealed it to them and then they came over the hill and discovered their role, like that was actually how we like had yeah. a stack of discs people walked over the hill found their role like that was actually how that all went down yep and then we just literally just walked over to the first tee it so happened very that, quickly i you, think you that had played probably... into the nervous energy was like oh everyone yeah. just discovered what game they're actually playing and then they're just thrown in and they're like if we don't do this we're gonna lose 500 dollars." so it just yeah. like instantly was high energy and like high Super tension in, on the course yeah it was a very quick turnaround so we get to hole one hole one's very simple hole just you know and again my whole thing is like, we are just trying to beat the line, right? We, you don't have to try. And we're playing worse shot. So you don't even have to throw a good shot. It's just don't throw a terrible shot. And we put ourselves in a good position yeah. with both of our drives. Two fine we're, spots, yeah. We're both within, one we're within 150 feet, the other within 100 feet. I was saying actually, and actually the one that was on the left side was actually in a better spot it was a little further yeah. but it was a wide open high our shot, our, our and, shot. Yeah. yeah and that's where we start with with that yes. bad upshot so i and, and here's my thing guys <laughs> here's bad thing. disc golfers here's thing. that's gonna hurt by the end of this <laughs> <laughs> bad disc golfers a lot of times it's not so much they're i mean yeah obviously not being a, a good putter or not being uh consistent that does play a role but a lot of times they just don't throw the right shot like that, a lot of times will save you so many strokes if you just throw the right shot. I think it's sometimes and, I think what people don't understand too is the right shot doesn't mean the best shot. It means the best shot for that person. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And, I think and there's all, a couple scenarios where there may have been a shot that is okay for certain people to throw, but not others. Correct. Yeah. And and again, we are playing in a situation where we're just trying to make pars. We're not trying, no one's trying to play hero, disc golf. You're just trying to make pars. Well, yeah. And so when we get up to that shot, I literally tell, I think it was uh, Gary and Josh. I think those two were, and then me and yes. the other Josh were the other partners. And I just told him, because I'm putting, right? And I feel like I'm a decent putter. So I just tell him, there's a bunch of trees on the left. So I'm looking at the basket. I'm like, just throw something 20 feet out to the right. It's wide open. 20 feet out to the right is where we're trying to land. Josh throws this shot. That is 40 feet short and 30 feet left of the basket. He throws a 150 foot upshot like 70 feet away from where I'm telling him to throw. 
So instantly my radar goes off like, what the heck was that? Right. And I'm instantly <laughs> thinking, okay, Mikey might be the imposter because he wants to go positivity, which makes no sense. And then, <laughs> and then Josh throws this terrible upshot. And then right after that, we go over in the other, cause we kind of split into two teams, right? Right after that, we go over and this other team is looking at trying to throw a shot through a gap it's better. when it they could just shot. throw in a round backhand. And I'm Trevor's like, Trevor's locked on the, that one. No, the backhand, the backhand was genuinely. Now this might be a case of, for me, it looked easier, but I thought that punching it under the brush looked really easy to get to 30, 20 feet and got Anheuser was harder than for a guy who's six foot five. I bet it was easy. But the, when I looked at the Anheuser, <laughs> I didn't like it one bit. Again, we're just trying to get something to 30 feet. And if, it, right. if you, th now obviously we saw what happened. Yeah. It uh, didn't work. <laughs> not a great shot. <laughs> like, Tur turns it'll out. It'll go down in history. <laughs> turns out we didn't really know his skill level up until that point. Uh, but I'm looking at that. I'm just thinking like, if you just throw any backhand out, you're going to have a putt where if one of these guys is the imposter, we can right away. They can easily just turf it or throw it into a tree. That, that is a fair point. The scrambling is the best place for the imposter to be. That's for, yeah. that's for sure. A close tree in the woods is is got to be the best friend of the imposter at all times. So right then, we are already after hole one. We are already on on probably one of the easier holes. We're two yeah. over par. Two over, yeah. yeah. After hole one, and I'm thinking in my head like, what is happening? Right. I'm I'm starting to spiral a little bit here. First three holes are just meltdown. Because there's already three, there's already three people in my head that I'm thinking are the imposter after hole one, right? <laughs> then, then, I can, I remember being so shocked that people were already like throwing out names and stuff like after the first hole, and I was like, I was like, oh man, people are really jumping in here. Yeah. Then, then we get to, um, then we get to hole uh, two. This is the famous, and this is this might be where the whole the whole episode just blows up. I I couldn't believe it. He Josh steps up to a forehand roller. Well, you, I I couldn't believe it. It's so funny because I so I never played college disc golf with Josh, but Hunter did. And the only thing I ever heard about Josh was that he was addicted to the forehand roller to a point where like he was threatened to be benched for it. And so when he walked up and held it up, I was just chuckling in my mind because I was like, this is not a shocking well, play from him. Yeah. But Brody is about to just light him up because what's, like you can't throw that shot. What's funny is when when we were talking through because how the how the casting worked, some people didn't realize this either is how the casting worked was our goal was to have four creators and four basically audience members from applications. So Brody creator one, Trevor creator two. Robbie C was originally supposed to be one of the creators, but he wasn't able to make it. That would the, have been the, awesome the if he was there. Work out. So um, Josh and Mikey were from Overthrow were were brought in, um, and Josh actually was saying he wanted to come on the show just because he hadn't played disc golf under pressure in a long time, and he wanted to he wanted to play under pressure again just because he wanted to just see like what would happen. And so <laughs> when I like brought it to Silas and Brad and all them, and I was explaining why I thought this was a good pick. I was like, to be honest with you, I think what is going to go best here is I have played a lot of games with Josh. So I know how Josh is like argumentative. Like I know, I know that he's not going to back down, which can, that could really, this is all pre-show. I was like, I know that can really create some electric moments. And I said, and two, his shot selection is never anyone else's shot selection. I was like, we we literally will come up to holes where it's a backhand hyzer and he'll go forehand roller. And I was like, <laughs> which is fine when you're playing collegiate doubles and stuff, but in imposter, I was like, that's gonna cause some tension. I was like, and I said it before, I was like, that there could be a situation where like it just gets to, to where they're almost in a yelling match back and forth at some point. I think it could be electric. And so we went back and forth and I was like, I, I really think it's a good idea. And then hole two, he lines up the forehand roll there. And I like looked at Connor and we both had this moment of like, here we go. This is, this is exactly what, what we thought was, was about to happen. And poetry. sure enough, it was like and, poetry and motion. And again, I, I see how like some people were, uh, you know, there were some comments being like, I wish other, you guys let other people talk more, you know, cause it was a lot of me, Trevor, um, you know, obviously Hunter, you talking too, cause you're the host, but like if me and first off, just to let everyone know, we told everyone that the camera Silas is there with a camera. If you ever want and talk to talk to Silas about anything, yeah. you can go and talk. I think so, 
what people what people don't realize too is with that thing because I saw a lot of comments about that too is like you and I have done do this for our job yes. like we're so used to it yeah so people were just shy and nervous like as the show goes on you'll see a lot it more interaction a lot more. yeah because think, that's just what Brody and I are used to doing and I think too something for next season that we talked about is filming like right after we do something having guys sit down and film right after saying like hey this happened what did you think and then now you have them actually talking because doing that in the middle of the round i i get we can still maybe have some of that but it does take away a little bit so i think at the end of the round having like hunter connor brad like more of the producers asking like hey after hole one josh like what were you thinking with brody kind of coming after you and then him talking then we could insert that actually into when it happened in real time and make a lot of sense because to Trevor's point, if I didn't say anything on hole two, when, when he was about to throw that forehand roller, I don't think anyone would have said anything. No. I think everyone would just let it happen. And, and, and it's not because I don't think it's because people are thinking like, Oh, forehand roller. That's kind of a wild thing. It's just a lot of people aren't comfortable coming out and talking on camera. And maybe a lot of people aren't talk comfortable talking to people they've never talked to. Right. So um, that's just where I just felt like, Again, I felt like I was kind of put into this captain role without ever it actually being decided, I guess. And maybe that was my fault of trying to steer people away from bad decisions. Forehand roller on that hole is a bad decision because you can literally just th like jump putt, jump putt and have a putt for par where luckily me and Josh were the ones throwing that upshot. And Josh is actually a pretty uh, phenomenal disc golfer to him is right. We actually were able to somehow scramble through all those trees. So the forehand roller was just absolutely wild. <laughs> and it was another thing too, of where I would have been completely fine. If he busts out like and look and shows the forehand roller. And then I'm like, wait, what are you doing? And then he's like, Oh, you want me to throw back in? Okay. I'll throw it back. If he would have done that, I would have been like, okay, probably not the imposter, but the fact that he still did it and then it turned out terrible. That just was yeah. like, this guy's yeah, the imposter on it. This guy's it was, the imposter. It was a, uh, it was, well, like I said, to, I was actually his doubles partner at one point in, in, <clears throat> in college. So to me, it wasn't like, I knew that like those type of shots might happen just because that's what he's comfortable with. And like, he was saying later in the round, like I parked it with the forehand roller earlier. Cause like, that's just, but in that situation, an imposter where you have like the majority of people are going to see a line and think one shot in imposter. That's the shot you almost have to throw if you want to be not yeah, suspicious. Yeah, you got to play. Even this. if it's like I'm discussing at a forehand turnover, if you choose the shot that is against the grain, you have to execute it. It better work. Yeah, yeah. because like if you if you throw the forehand roller and it gets across the ditch and it's like a 25 footer, then no one can really say anything. You can be like, that was a terrible shot selection. You're like, well, it's inside the circle. So. Right. But a lot easier to then be like, yeah, this is just what I do. And people will be like, okay, I guess it is. Yeah. But <laughs> when it, it messed up is when it really, really yeah. pivoted. But uh, so we got through hole two, hole three. All of those were leading up to the, the whole 4T moment of. Well, well, hole th well, first off, hole three, w there was a moment there yes. because the forehand. Uh, Trevor, Trevor just allowed the flex forehand from Josh, which is a uh, guy's. Any shot that's fading with the hillside <laughs> is a bad uh, shot selection because if you throw it poorly, we're done. I mean, you saw where we ended up. We were a hundred feet down the hill with no putt. And that's where I made the comment. I said, this game is not about trying to throw a, the best shot. It's about not trying to throw a bad shot. And yeah. I don't think at that point, like really anyone had like thought about that. I think everyone was still trying to like look good on camera and throw good shots. And it's like, you don't have to throw terrible shots. And the flex forehand was just, uh i mean that was just absolutely brutal yeah just so so brutal to watch and i think also a lot of people too they're wondering because i think on the t i told everyone don't throw the forehand on that hole because it fades away off the t and then i proceed to throw the forehand and a lot of people were confused being like wow brody you said don't throw the forehand but then you throw the forehand this kind of goes back to what trevor was saying of where i'm telling people like the easiest shot and also at that point in time where our uh where josh had thrown his shot i knew i could just step up there yeah, and throw you just forehand. had to get farther than josh's shot. i could just yeah. throw a forehand that was better right if josh would have thrown a great backhand shot then i would have thrown a backhand 
because I was going to have to try to get better than his. Yeah. But to get better than the shot he threw, a forehand would have been super easy. So I, I think Correct. there was some confusion with no, that as well. Made a but lot yeah, of go, to, go to hole four. Well, because hole four was kind of the, the legendary moment in my head, at least. The, the mic didn't pick it up super clearly, so I don't think it got the props it deserved of Josh walking up, asking the crowd i would i'd like to throw a flip up putter here if that's fine with everyone and then slowly turns and hits the oh, lord, lord brody and i mean because at that point i like I, i've said this uh, a few times about this show like I, I filmed a lot of disc golf content over this past several years that was that moment down the fairway was the most just like actual off camera intense like you could feel it in the air <laughs> crazy competition moment that we've had on camera and i was it came through luckily through the camera too because i think it made for phenomenal content and i, I had to explain that to, to josh later because he was like he felt kind of bad he's like hey i kind of let it that whole moment get the best of me i'm like you don't understand how great of content you just made like we were out here to make great content and that's what just happened we don't have to worry like no one's taking it personally everyone's out here playing a game everyone's cool that was like electric um, and, and so that was kind of the whole climax to me. Cause after that, he threw a decent shot. I think we, we made double really part. well from there on out like, say, until, made, until the end. Yeah. Until the, the, end. Well, the putting situation. Yeah, before we get there, let's, yeah, let's just kind of talk about kind of what first happened. So, you know, I thought that was a hilarious line, but I thought my line was completely right. in saying like, if you throw a good shot oh, yeah. and like prove that, you know what you're doing, you don't have to ask me. But yes, ask me yeah. because what you just showed the first couple holes is atrocious. And I thought this comment was pretty funny. This is uh, from Steven. He says, Josh is either the imposter or the internet needs to find a new coach. Coming into this, I knew he was a coach and I knew he makes, you know, he makes a lot of content and coaches a lot of people. I've also been a coach. I've coached ultimate Frisbee. I've coached tennis. So I do take coaching kind of seriously and I think that also kind of played a role a little bit in my frustration with him is because if it was from some random person that I have no idea and they're like an MA3 player, then I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But like he's teaching people how to play disc golf and there was multiple things he was doing. And again, it's not like he was throwing a bad shot and I was like, dude, you should be better at that. I don't care about that. But there was like fundamental things that – and I think that's where I maybe a little more of my built up frustration was going was I'm like, you teach disc golf. You shouldn't be making these. You shouldn't be making these mistakes like decision making mistakes. Well, I think that's what and that kind of boiled over a little I bit. Think that's too much. why he, he wanted to be on the show in general is because he just hasn't put himself under pressure in a while. I think that like that was a big thing he wanted to kind of feel again was that tournament type pressure where because making making decisions and going out and playing a practice round with no pressure on you is the easiest thing in the world. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like when when you don't have pressure, you can't even really tell if it's a bad shot or not because like well you're just out here chucking having a good time. So I think that was a big thing, especially he said he wanted his putt under pressure because he just wanted to feel what I think a lot of people feel when they're like coming and want to fix x y or z. So I don't know if he wanted to feel the amount of pressure he ended up feeling when it was all said and done, but yeah, I think I think that that they kind of what was funny it was after hole four and hole five i think y'all end up going i think there's end up being like a bogey on hole five around that time though me brad and connor kind of had a like little powwow in the middle of the fairway i don't even know if y'all realized we just no like, we didn't because i was like stop. they need to do something or this is just gonna be at, terrible at, at this point in the video we were pretty positive the line was gonna get missed and oh, I was yeah. I was worried just retention wise for the show of if the line because going in, I knew players skill levels by them telling me and I had watched a lot of them on Instagram to at least see them throw. So that's all we had basing the line off of was like we had some rough knowledge. But when everyone got out there, no one was playing great. And there's just some terrible shots to where we were way off a of pace, like <laughs> way off a of pace. And I was like, talk, so we were all talking. I was like, they're either going to get stuff together and this is going to be electric and it's going to get really close, which thank goodness that's what happened. I was like, or we've got to find a way to pivot the line. I was like, the problem is we've built this whole show around the imposter making people miss the line. And if the imposter has acted to make them miss this line, we can't make it unfair to the imposter. Yeah. So what we actually had planned was um, first off, we switched up the crazy caddy offer to make it a little bit more likely for people Which, to have taken it. 
is a wild idea for all those commenters out there saying we should have done the crazy caddy what originally yeah, no. we were going to put the crazy caddy on i forget what it was going to be it was going to be on a a, a, di a harder hole and it had different incentive to where it was just going to be kind of a part of it we tried to sweeten it a little bit um we upped the like the the pot we split it we did because that was our first goal was like if they want to do this let's try to make it where it's very incentive heavy where even if they miss the line it can offset so that was option a and then option b was we did have a line adjustment option by if y'all got to hole i think it was out of the woods i think it, we were gonna let you play 9 10 11 hmm. and once you were through that we had a like doomsday line adjustment moment where y'all could pay the imposter to move the line which right. what we had essentially come up with we played well on that thankfully y'all turned it around things started heading the right direction well, everyone kind of settled into the show we got, we got the burn well, yeah we and that, we, was, at, that changed at, everything after hole three, we had like a rally of the troops yeah. and we kind of talked about like, listen, we're all trying to do this together. So let's, let's all work. Cause you can't, you can't, I mean, obviously I was pointing fingers at certain people about being the imposter, but you got to just like act like everyone's working together. Um, I think I also said something along the lines, like pressure makes diamonds, like putting people under pressure. We're going to get the best stuff out of people. And at that point, I think because a lot of stuff was cut, we didn't show everything what you saw in the first couple holes of like me telling people what I think they should throw that never stopped. I did that throughout the entire round that just got cut. A lot of that yeah. did. Uh, we didn't keep showing me telling people throw a backhand here, throw the forehand here, but that happened all throughout the round and people started throwing better shots. And like you said, I think people just started getting a little bit more comfortable, kind of had to break the ice a little bit there. And uh, we got through it, and we got we got really close, and it, it yeah. made for a very exciting final hole. Yeah, it ended up being electric. Came down to the final putt, which I think was was perfect. Um, obviously, didn't go. It went the imposter's way. Didn't go everyone else's way. Um, what I do think is interesting, and this is the dynamic. If you go to watch episode two now, you'll see kind of going into it is that everyone has this feeling, whether it's right or not, that the imposter's gone going into the round. Mm -hmm. But with imposter disc off and how it always works out is like there's going to be people who crack under pressure. And so that's what episode two kind of brings when you go to watch that is you're going to especially just see throughout the round where multiple different people crack at multiple different points. And it starts to put a lot of doubt into people's minds. In this episode, I'm really excited for people to watch because it's where the other characters in the show start to take on their personality, where they start to come to the camera, voice their doubts about X, Y, and Z. They start to talk a little bit more at the table, play a little bit more strategy game. Heck, there's even some people who are very, very confident the imposters out are now playing strategy of we have to make sure we hit the line, so who are we voting out, which is an interesting strategy too. So episode two, we'll recap it next week, but I think it, it starts to lean in a little bit more where the uh, the other characters, the other cast members start having a stronger voice and you know you start to see their character arc start to develop. So I'm really excited for that. But I think episode one has been received phenomenally well. If it if it keeps going well, we might do a premiere for the finale for episode five so that we can kind of have, you know, everyone in the live chat popping back and forth. I think that could be a, a fun, you know, final episode thing. Um, but yeah, it's five weeks. I don't know if we, I think we said that in the first episode, but it's five weeks. So you have episode two this week, three, four, five, every Tuesday from here on out. And uh, it's electric. Yeah. Very exciting. Let me, I want to add a few more things and then we'll yeah. end it. So the the end the end putt by Joel I thought that was a great way to end it. Yes. I also kind of had like a thought that it might be him, so I was like, all right, if I give this kid you know fifty dollar incentive, you know, and it's not him, then he's actually going to try to make this putt. Um, and it was into a raging headwind. Like that was a very hard putt. It could have been super easy for him to miss it oh, with yeah. it making look like he was trying to make it. And so once he made it, I was like, okay, well, it's clearly not him. I'm not going to vote for him. And then Gary told me, I, I didn't know this at the time, but Gary told me later that he had asked, um, cause in the video you see like Josh never puts first, Gary always puts. And if Gary missed, then Josh came up. But on that one, Gary wanted a head, a, a wind read. And so he was asking Josh if he, he could get give one. him, give him a wind read. And Josh was like super anti and not wanting to do it, which Gary thought was very weird. And then, I mean, Josh's attempt was one of the most atrocious attempts I've ever tough. seen at a putt. 
So they, to me, that was just like the nail on the head. It didn't really matter what happened after that. Yeah. I was going to vote for him. That's how um, I felt. But I do want to say too, like this, these are kind of interesting because obviously we did have a lot of uh, two things for like trying to maybe look into next season, how we want to recruit people and stuff. The first one is like having a bunch of people's skill levels all over the map. Like you were saying, it does make it very hard to tell, like, is someone like an imposter or they, are they just have no idea and are they just kind of clueless? Um, So it'd be interesting to see like, what if you did one where like everyone was like a decent disc golfer, how would that pan out? And then the other thing is too, like, obviously we got a lot of people kind of throwing um, comments back and it is curious. I'm curious to see uh, like this comment said, Everyone who doesn't like Brody, what do you want the series to look like? Just guys throwing bad shots and other guys saying nice shot with some royalty-free music in the background. He makes it entertaining, (laughs) and he's passionate about winning the challenge. You all are soft. I think the big issue with this is we didn't really have any other big personalities in that first episode, right? And so there – we had the little bit of back and forth with me and Josh, but then after that, it kind of went away and there wasn't really any, any more kind of pushing back and forth. And so this would be like a very, I feel like this would be very interesting if we had, let's see if we had like a a, a goose, if we got goose on here, who's comfortable, willing to express his opinion, say what he wants. Uh, Other people that are willing to like come after us, you know, I, I think, at the end of the day, I think the way that the show was set up, I probably should have gone in it differently if I was trying to make everyone like happy and feel good about playing. <laughs> but I think yeah. the content would have been terrible. I think it would have. I just think it would. Have, the first episode would have been really boring. Yeah. No. If I if I wasn't saying anything, I just stood back. I was like, you know, what? I don't know how any of these guys play. I'm not going to say anything this first episode. I'm just going to stand back, let everyone do what they want, and then talk. I think the first episode would have been really, really bad. As far as like entertainment wise. Yeah. No, I um, think the first episode was electric. I think it's also fun seeing the the fans theories um, in, in the comments too. So I'm very excited to keep. Also keep people that. might be really soft now. I'm, I might, I haven't Maybe. really, I haven't really done anything like team oriented in a really long time on the internet. People might be really soft now because if this show would have come out 10 years ago, I don't think we would have seen a lot of these comments. Also, I'm just going to throw it out there. I think a lot of the people that are watching foundation disc golf have never played team sports before because um, if you've played team sports before and you're trying to win, you have guys on your team that are pushing you to try to win. If you watch the NFL, do you see everyone kumbaya, hooray, happy dude, lucky with no, what, what are we talking about? So I think, and again, if people want to come after me, that's fine. Uh, You just have never played a team sport. (laughs) <laughs> because at the end of the day, like if we make, if we, if we would have made that putt on that final thing, everyone would have been super stoked. Everyone would have been super happy and no one would have cared how we got there. We completed, completed the goal. Yeah. That's all that matters. And if you're someone that takes in competition, if you're someone that takes like what people say to you to heart and you like hold grudges, like Trevor could say, dude, you suck right now. Stop talking. We need you to be quiet. After after the competition, I wouldn't be like, dude, Trevor's really mean. <laughs> like, I would I wouldn't take it personally, right? And so yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of people watching don't play team sports and they take everything too personal. There you go. You've been called I'll out. At, I'll leave it at that. It. Leave it You're at that. Solved. Well, let's get into a I'm non. Solved. Yeah. Let's go into a non-team sport, which is the guess the rating to remind you how this is going to work. You're going to be shown a picture of a disc golfer that has been submitted, emailed to me. You're going to guess their division first. And if you get the division right, then how far off you are in the rating will be divided by two. After you guess the division, you'll submit your guess on the player's rating. You want the fewest points possible. You get one point per rating point that you're off. So yeah, I found that last year, my biggest weakness was not knowing what ratings are playing in what division these days. Yeah. Because apparently what's Wait, written in the PGA is I, just, I don't know that either. Can well, we, no, it doesn't no. matter what's written down because... Apparently, if you're above blah 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 rating and you're still playing MA2, you're a criminal. And like I even though it's allowed in the PDGA, like that, that's what happened to me last year. Is I'd be like, Oh, you're 912? Like, yeah, okay, you're probably uh you can still play this division. And people are like, Oh, if you're playing that, you're a sandbagger. Also, being completely you know, honest, do we have an ad read or something for the next 20 seconds? Cause I have to buy this box. We we don't, but we can make one. 
shout out to Grippies. Do a little yeah. shout out for the Grippies. Well, if you haven't watched the uh, most recent episode of Grip Lock, go back, check it out. It's your favorite pro's favorite podcast, Grip Lock. You can uh, watch the Grippies and see, you know, do you agree with us on Player of the Year? Uh, we gave out the Grammy, the Grippy Grammy. The um, first ever. You know, first ever Grippy Grammy. That went to an electric, electric song, if you will. Uh, podcast of the year, very elusive and prestigious award, was awarded at the end. The tour life host of the year came out of the blue. Um, there's a lot of great stuff in in that show. And what was fun is as soon as it came out, we started getting texts from pros responding to whatever happened during the grippies. Some people giving us very um, sought after footage. Some people giving us uh, Did the wristband look content. orange to you on the screen. It is orange on this screen, <laughs> yes. But the rest what of is... your color. The oh, red... oh. Wait, 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 they changed back. Wait, so let's do that again. What? <laughs> What's up with that? That's weird. Okay. Hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying to buy this case. Check out. Check oh, out. We're still checking out. It's magic. Check out. <laughs> Shots, um, uh, and you know what? Once you're silence. done watching the Grippies, go watch episode two of the Imposter series. I think if if you liked episode one, you'll <laughs> like episode two. But even if you didn't quite like episode one, episode two mellows out a little bit. But it's still say there's way less of, Brody too. Way less Brody. The people full, watch, but it's it. still full of drama. Less Brody, still full of drama. Um, Boom, bought it. It's, it's electric. In. So, all right, Perfect. side guy, let's get the first picture up here and get this thing going. Oh, man, I forgot how hard this all is. All right, this guy here, his name is Will Ferris. He has played 14 events in his career, earning himself three wins, and he's been a PDGA member since 2022. He yeah. is also a certified official. So this guy gives me post-COVID, he's athletic, I think Isn't he's an athlete? certified official. Mm. No, you have yeah, to take a, a separate, separate, uh, to play certain test. tournaments. You have to be one. Um, so I think he's an athlete who found disc golf post COVID form looks pretty solid here in this, in this picture. Also I also noticed a tournament. Cause yeah. he's got, he's got like a banner sign here. So there's like a legit tournament. That he's wearing both flippy and idio sports gear. So he's like, he's into disc golf in the consumer sense. Like he's, He's buying the disc golf stuff. Um, but I mean, right away, I can just tell from this guy's form, like this guy has to be, has to be at least MA2, probably MA1 or above, in my opinion. He looks, okay. it looks like he's making a pretty athletic move. I like the bucket hat. Who, who's going first? We'll, on have this Trevor, one? we'll have Trevor go first since he's like the conversation. You guess the division first. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and he's only played 14 events and he hasn't been playing for super long. So it's possible he's moved all the way up to pro, but I don't think we're probably there yet. He could be MA2 still, but I, I mean, you know, I have to go with my gut in this game because I know we're going to be deceived. Hunter's been cackling in his office for weeks talking about how these weeks. guys are tricksters. But this this is not a trickster photo to me. This is like in a tournament, I agree. I think this is MA1 and that's my division guess. Okay. It might be better. Brody. I, I can't I can't go MA2. No. If this guy's can't. MA2, this guy's robbing the field. So my only choice, I, I would have gone MA1, but my only choice has got to be MA uh MPO here. And this and, is how I always end up losing. <laughs> did I do I tell you all the division now? I think I do. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. This player is an MA1. He is an yes. MA1 player. Yep. Now, yeah, it that feels good to get one on the dot because it's like th that's what we thought, you know? Yes. That was now, that was you are I allowed to guess MA1 know, as well, Brody, by the way. This season. Oh, I thought he, we could guess the same thing. No, you definitely can. That's on me. Uh, I think. This season, I think, yeah, I think you're allowed. <laughs> I would to allow it. Yeah. Division. I think that's, it was when we, we used to play this game guessing only the division, and that's what you weren't allowed to. The only disadvantage to oh. like somebody guessing first is you kind of get to tip the person off towards like yeah. what they're thinking. Um, Wait, we I do will, divi we do division and then what? And, and then, then rating. Because the division oh, divides your rating. That's guess by right. Two. The rating's so tough. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I will yes, let yes. you know additional context. This guy has played some MJ 18 events this year. He's also played Very two MA2 events this year but the majority of his tenure has MA1. been an ma1 okay that's a pretty big hint to me so fringe ma2 into ma1 guy it means he can't i mean you can your rating can shoot up really quick though like in a year and he's new to disc golf so like within this year of 2024 he could have gone up 25 30 ratings points for all we know but i'm gonna say his, i'm gonna play it safer and say his jump wasn't that crazy 
and float a little bit lower. I'm going to say he's made it all the way up to 957. Okay, 957. I think he's made a okay, quite a jump. That's do pretty we, high maybe, but should should we do this? What? Just just thinking outside the box. Should we go because Trevor's going first? Should we go where I have the option of going higher or lower for one point? Or if I'm trying to get, if I nail it on the head, I get like three points. It's more, but you'll go first next time though. Yeah, you get first next time. I know, time. and then you go higher or lower. But I think it's more electric whenever you make no, you a get, guess because then if the, you get it on the dot, Yeah, you electric. get the points based off of like, if you guess, like let's say Trevor gets oh, 957. Oh, it's how close I am. It's oh, how yeah, close yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, Trevor could be what, 150 points off. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. What'd you say, Trevor? I said 957. I was thinking like nine sixties, nine low nine seventies. That see, that's reasonable, but I just feel like it's tough. If he was You're playing going NA2 this here, year, Trevor. you don't have to explain. I it. know. I, I guess like if he was playing, maybe I'm just in his head. I don't know. I just feel like he was playing MA2 at the beginning of this year for him to run that far up. He, it's doable it's for sure. It's not hard to get like. Yeah, it's no, really it, not that if hard. he's gotten a lot better and he's playing like more tournaments, like that's the other thing is sometimes like maybe the last oh, two years I played like one event. Playing, yeah. Yeah. You never Can you know. tell us how many tournaments he's played? He's played 14, 14 in his entire career across three seasons. That's not a lot. That's not, yeah, a lot. That's not a lot. And not he's played lot. at least two. He's played at least three events this year because we know he's already played two in MA2. Well, he's in the majority in MA1. So he's nine, actually played at least five events nine, this season. 60 for Brody. Oh, you're playing it safe. All right. That's great for me because I'm going to get I don't like the num- I don't half. like the amount of events he's played. If he played like 20 something plus then then he definitely could have increased. The correct rating was 944. Yeah. Yeah. The Trevor ends up with 6.5 points, Brody's at 16. Okay. I was going to say it would be imp- he's got good form. It'd be he must suck at putting. I Maybe. bet I bet he's closer to 960 as like his last couple tournaments. Probably. Uh, all right, let's. He has one up. I believe it was 15 points this year. So that felt good. We were pretty locked in. Yeah, that, on was, him. that was pretty that, solid. That felt good. That wasn't too bad. That was too bad. Nice, easy let's one. get the uh, let's get the next player up here, Psy guy. Now we're talking, baby. Look at that there downward angle of attack. This we have Sam McCollman from Canada, Alberta, Canada. Ooh, our Canadian been a member, ratings dirty, Brody. Member since 2021, 20 career events, two career wins. All yeah. right. Thigh tattoos you. jumping out at me. High socks also jumping out at me. I'm not seeing high, disc high golf specific socks. shoes, really. Definitely yeah, not the like typical ones. Shoes. Raptors hat. Um, that is checks that what that out. Is? Yeah, it's the Raptors. How do you have a much? Do you have, I feel like you have a much higher quality stream of this. I've got uh, a monitor we're in with studio, full so that might be a little. <laughs> yeah, you can make the uh, you can make the like preview full screen if you want. Yeah, it's already. blurry as heck for me. Um, That's tough. That is tough. Give me. I'll let you guess first before I say. Anything. Yeah, give me MA3 here. Give me MA3. MA3 for yeah. Brody. Give me MA3. He's got quite a swoop going on. And the fact that he's got two wins now, it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean he like he doesn't may have either. had those wins in MA3 and then moved himself up. I've already got a big lead. I mean, I my initial guess was also MA3, but I'm going to try and separate myself further and guess MA2, even though I, I think it's probably MA3. Correct answer was MPO. Wow! <laughs> oh, it's Canada, Brody. He's it's got, Canada. We should have so known. One of his wins came in 2021 in MA2. His second win came this year in MA1, and he has now moved up into MPO, and he has cashed. Is this an old photo? Different events. Is this a recent photo? This is the photo he sent me. I don't know how recent. He might, or, he might be tricking us. <laughs> um so okay mpo now you know that he has cash this though, season they don't he's have also won an ma1 there. this season uh both of you are just going straight at it brody what is this guy's rating well, i mean to be fair i play mpo and like what does that mean you know give me give me uh 972 972 for brody there's a chance it could be even lower than that it could be i'm gonna say 964 and well, like Thomas Gilbert goes to Canada and just absolutely dominates everyone. Yeah. 964 for Trevor. It could be way higher as well. Like we might no, you have no ourselves. idea. 964 for Trevor? Yeah. Okay. I think, the it was, correct, I think it was higher. We would know who this the is. The correct answer 
Was. You know, you know all the Y'all were both too high. Y'all were both too high. It was 952. 952. Okay. So Trevor gets right. 12 points there. Okay. Brody was 20 off. Let's bring up this third picture, Sai Guy. Here we go. Oh, yeah. This is. He's surely not throwing it at that basket, right? <laughs> no, that's a short so. basket, okay. probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. This is Jonathan Marskio. I don't really know how to pronounce his, his full name. Martinsburg, West Virginia. Uh, been a member since 2019. He was a certified official at some point, but it is expired. Um, and he has only played a career total of 11 events across those five years. Is he wearing okay. a PDGA shirt? No. I'm wondering if the woman behind him is carrying his bag. Why does he have a gallery? What's going on? Yeah, here? that's the bigger question is, well, okay. I think the other three guys in the background are just on the card. You think, that guy's, is, you think that guy's you guys playing in jeans? The crazy thing is, yeah, well, guys wearing jeans, Brody. You have not been you have not been to enough disc golf yeah, tournaments. If you, on, if you play enough local Dallas <laughs> tournaments this year, you'll see. You'll maybe see not some Dallas. Things. Maybe not in Dallas. It's true. In like the Northeast, though. Where's he? Are you from I'll West just, Virginia? I'll just clue you in. He's in West Virginia. That dude's yeah. rocking an end of a bag. The dude in jeans. Yeah, he's, he's definitely playing. playing. Oh, he's playing. <laughs> so I'm thinking those other guys on his card, and that card. This card looks. It is MA3 or worse looking at that card. Like these guys are new to the game. That one guy's got a satchel. Exactly. Bag. Now you're catching on. <laughs> but but this trying guy's... to tell me a satchel bag is the future. No, it's not. It That's sure like one of the isn't. most uncomfortable bags to wear as a disc golfer. So this guy, I mean, his his throw looks fine, but like, I mean, this is to me, this is classic MA3. Classic MA3. I, I'm pretty settled on that. He looks like he's kind of dressed into the part as well. He's pretty put together in disc golf apparel um, or like what the AM players wear. He's taking the game seriously, and I like that. The one fair. alarming thing to me in this photo is his hand is higher than the disc. Oh, is it coming out? Uh, he's throwing downhill, uh, though. Yeah, it's your slow. hand shouldn't be higher than the disc. <laughs> Yeah, it might be he might have chucked it into the ground. Like that's how do you well let me be clear. I guess MA3, so I'm fine with you giving negative feedback to the player. That's that line. If, it, up. if he's throwing on hyzer and his follow through is coming up. Oh, that's true. He could be throwing it on a hyzer angle and his arm is coming actually a up. Down, and, a downhill and a little bit of hyzer and his arm's yeah, swinging up, maybe. That checks out actually. I don't, I don't you, think so, boys. You gotta I don't, know. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, boys, I don't think so. If you're throwing a hyzer and you're going like that, it's going yeah. up and away. But I guess Brody's and, is a, and, it, and the, the dish should be going up too. The dish oh, good should point. be going up. If so your it's arm early release. going up, the throat That's should be going early up. Release. Early release. Yeah, I, I probably have a lot release. of pictures that look just like that, I would have to guess. <laughs> is, it my, is it me? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're guessing the division here. Oh, give me uh gosh, Could dang it. He situation. looks so nice. Like he looks, I mean, cargo pants is also wild. It's the card mates that, like, if it was just him. I Cargo wouldn't know where to wild. go, but it, it's his card mates that are throwing me, they're giving me the biggest clue here. I'm going MA3 again. C Cargo yeah. pants is y'all both, both went yeah. MA3? It's got to be MA3 or MA4. It is MA3. It, he's right. played a mix of MA3 and MA4, but he leans a little yeah. bit more towards MA3. Um, this I believe, is where the ratings gets hard. <laughs> I believe that he's playing in a college disc golf event here. Oh, I could be wrong. He's a college but I think, player? I think that's a team shirt, and I think that the three gray boys in the back are all rocking team gear as well. Oh, Bro, this guy could pass. Point. This guy could pass for thirty. Um, Here, if, easily, I will. Dude. I will say well, he, if he it was college, a collegiate event, here. if it was a collegiate event, then this picture is from 2019 because that's the only collegiate event he has on his PDJ profile. Oh, so he might be thirty. So just so throw that out there. Um, but yeah, he's played one MA3, one MA4 event in 2023. He's played zero events this year. Um, so this is, you're guessing his rating as of 2023. So it might as well, well be, be current. Yeah. But Brody I mean, or Trevor has the first guess. Once you get to MA3, the ratings, be, this is where the separation happens. Because MA1 and MPO especially, you can be locked in somewhere between 940 and 1,000 in this game. When you get to MA3, we could be anywhere between like 850 and 700. Like there is a large gap here. Um, I'm going to err on the side of a pretty low rating because if you're flirting with MA4, you're pretty far down the totem pole. I'm going to say this is an 818 rated player. 
That's a very low guess, but I that's where I'm landing. Okay. Brody? That might be too low. Yeah, how do you get that low? You could we've had some seven you high seven lower. hundos on this game there's before. Gonna be some, there's gonna be someone on the show in a few weeks <laughs> that it's just say you can get lower. We'll just say it that way. I gotta go mid eights here. I gotta go like eight the aggressive. Eight fifty. Eight fifty for Brody. Come on, buddy. Come it's gotta on. be too high. This could give God, me a lot of points, high. though, if it's higher than 850. Um, God, give me a lot of points like, Y'all here. are both getting divided by two, yeah. um, and both of you are too high. Yes. <laughs> He's 800 on the dot. Right? Yes, I knew. I'm on 800 fire 800 on the here. dot. What's this guy's name? It's my year. Jonathan Marskew. Jonathan. He's 800 right now? As of, Well, he hasn't had a rating update since 2023. But, yeah, he currently is 800 rated if he went out and played an event. Jonathan, if you want it, this is a free invite for free lessons if you're in Dallas. If you want it. I don't think he's in Dallas. He's in West Virginia, but you never know. Maybe well, if, he, if, he, if he comes to Dallas for a trip or something, hit there me go. up. There you yeah. go. Because you should be 850 plus easily. Easy. Right. Final easy. final player here. Uh, Brody has some ground to make up. Quick math what says he's this? down by 18, to like 30, roughly. Um, this is... <laughs> Tomahawk specialist. This yeah, is he's lining up an overhand. Roby yeah. one Kenobi Gregor. Oh, he's going Thummer, actually. Um, he's a Thummer. Great. His, uh, his, what's PJ his name? Ro- That's Roby, a, oh, are Roby we looking at the underside of the disc there? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Thummer. Disc there. He's going Thummer here. Roby one Kenobi Gregor. His PDGA profile picture is, uh, him photoshopped as a Jedi that says Roby one Kenobi. Was he the um, was he the freaking was he the freaking Jedi spotter. on DDO? He, I don't think he was, but where you might have seen him is at USDGC. He would he was the one riding around on the motorized scooter pulling the uh, watermelon uh, Zuka cart behind <laughs> oh, him. Oh man, is, that is Roby. So he was there last year too, I believe, Brody. So you might have seen him there. Uh, okay. He was around this year, so you've at least possibly seen this guy in person. Okay, um, he, he, he that has been a PDJ member since 2021. Okay, pretty wow. recent. 83 events played. This year? No, game. since 2021. He loves oh. the game. 83 events. He's played yeah, a lot game. of events there. Big game guy. Five career wins. Uh, wow. And you, yeah, go ahead. Guess the division. I believe this is Brody's turn first? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Brody's so this trouble. this I mean, is where this game gets us in trouble because I can't tell if this is an older gentleman or not. Like if this guy's touching 40 or if I'm way off. Does anybody want to comment on that? I would say <laughs> I can't I'll, tell. Just, I'll just tell you this: that don't guess age age protected. He doesn't play age protected divisions. Oh, okay. That's what you're that, trying to guess. Well, that helps me. Well, yeah, I was keeping that in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I was just. I think that's fair to give both of you. Do not okay. guess age protected. All okay. right, he's not throwing this on the tee. I think also, he's about to seven hundred feet. Look this also reach might be back. A, this might be a photo. This might not be an actual. I uh, know there's motion blur on his back foot though. Like he wasn't just posing. He was throwing. no, no. But I'm saying this is like, hey, this is a really cool. You're you're thinking there's a screenshot from a video? I don't think so. I, I think, think he was like, taking was a like, picture as a... he was making an actual throw. Though, like yeah, he yeah, wasn't well, posing. But you don't have to actually throw the dicks, <laughs> Is what I'm saying. I, I, right, I but think if you're gonna do that. Why not just stand I still? Think, I think there's a photo op. I think there's a photo op. He um, probably is. I don't know if that changes my opinion or anything, but <laughs> that's big. Another uh, guy wearing the idiot shoes. He's got a good outfit. He's definitely an outdoorsman. This guy is. Did you tell us where he's from? South Carolina. I forgot to say that. Oh, really? You should be able to tell that by the trees. I was about to say Um, something. Yeah, pine straw and trees. Give it away. Uh, Geo guesser. Um, The point. Give me. Gosh. See, the thing is, like, he could just play local tournaments and just shred them with a thumber. Well, and the thing is, I think that his low win percentage maybe even says that he could be playing up a little bit. Give me MA2. Give me MA2. MA2 for Brody, Trevor. I think for a guy that's played that many events, he's probably worked his way up to MA1. I'm going to say MA1. MA1 for Trevor. Both incorrect. He is in MA3. Oh, um, did not see that coming. So he wow. has played a not sprinkling of MPO and MA1. Very, Sorry. very few and far between. The majority of his work, including this year, comes in MA3. 
his big season was in 2022 when he played. I mean, it looks like a MA3 event every weekend, basically. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. He like there's some months where he might have played multiple on the weekend. Emerson um, Keith did. So 2024, this season, he's played uh, 12 events total, eight of them in MA3, three MA1, one MPO. Interesting, he's just allergic to MA2. Yeah, he does, he's not really doing MA2. Maybe ever. there's just not a lot of people in his area playing MA2. Could be. So, it's, yeah, he's probably Carolina. right. He probably, it sounds like he goes where the fun is, like where, where are the people at. <laughs> and I like that. Oh, not a big MA3 field? Top up. I like that. Hmm. This one's going to be tough. But also, I believe I was, this is uh, Brody's guess first. It's very it's convenient that I get to the... guess second because I can't lose. <laughs> MA3. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna... to say, I'm going to just throw a rule out here if y'all are good with it. If Brody guesses it on the dot, instant win. I love that. You're okay with that, Trevor? <sighs> I, 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 I mean, it's it on me. the dot. We got I, mean, I know, but we a... did that like three or four times last year. Give that you, don't, to me. you don't have to say yes. No, that's fine. I'll do it. Okay. It's still a one out of, I mean, it's still probably like a one in 100. Oh, yeah, this guy's playing all over the map. Mr. Smith. 866. 866 for Brody. Trevor? Um, I think he's a little higher than that. I'm going to say he is 882. 882 for Trevor. Let me figure this up here. Y'all were all over it. Y'all were all over it. Um, right in the middle, huh? His actual rating was 873. Right oh, in between both of y'all. Right in the middle. Great Dang. guesses, though. It was a pretty good show for us. We did pretty yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, the, the farthest points, I think, Brody got a 20, a 25 at one point. No, I was, yeah, I was way off on the he 800. He got divided in two, but. Yeah, but, yeah, but Trevor nine. went six and a half, 12, nine, and then that last one. Trevor had a great like, show. That, Trevor yeah, I pretty much threw a perfect game there. Yeah, Trevor that was hard to beat. That was going to be hard I, to I beat. wasn't going to win that one. Um, we do have a few topics, but unfortunately, I have an appointment I have to leave to get to. So I'm going to save these topics for next week. Um, and we'll get to them then. And we'll also have a fantastic story to go over uh, next week. I actually I screenshotted a story a few weeks ago. If I can find it on here. Um, yeah, what you know what? I'll read story? this. I'll read this to end it. This is from the Disc Golf Discussion. An anonymous participant in Disc Golf Discussion posted this over on Facebook. I love it when they're anonymous. And um, I just got a good little chuckle from from these these few posts here so first one came said i came here to vent i brought my wife and son along to play a few at my local course everything was great until we got stuck waiting over five minutes for some gen z d bag who mm. decide d bags plural who decided to throw their entire bag while we waited backed mm. up the whole course and we had to leave because i didn't want to slow anyone else down because i had a child it's called courtesy bleepers my <laughs> wife was my wife was asking if all disc golf is full of blank holes like this has anyone else had this experience i'm not kidding when i say it was a foursome each person threw over 10 discs each this is not an exaggeration i'm still fuming oh and would have verbally annihilated them um i can't read the next several words he calls them after <laughs> that um but my kid was there so i just left i hope this happens next time i'm with the boys because atomic wedgies will be handed out generously <laughs> didn't know people were still doing that um, I hope you see this, you rude little, again, I'm not going to read that next word, uh, get some manners or the adults will have to teach you something. So when I saw that, that was posted 12 minutes ago. And then eight minutes later, disc golf discussion, this post goes up. So I was at a local, I was at a local course with three of my buddies and we were playing this game called perfect 10, where we all throw 10 off the tee and take the best. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> Anyways. This guy threw a complete fit when his wife and toddler sat there. If we were asked to play through, we would have we would have obliged. Anyways, dude threw a complete fit, ran off like a little girl, and one of my buddies got his wife's number. Crazy Saturday. That's, That's the one too much. Right? Definitely a fake second post, but That's it got a really good chuckle funny. out of me. Perfect ten. Yeah, got a good <laughs> chuckle out of me. I think we can stop. I mean, I think it's it's a fun thing to say, especially for like niche sports, because you want to, you know, you want to feel good about what you're doing, and you know. Every sport does it. Every niche sport says like we have the best community, the best people like, oh, golf. That's where like all the people that suck play. No, there, there's people that suck in everything. There's just a lot of bad people in this world, unfortunately. And you just try to be the best you can be and uh, move on past it. 
There you have it. It's, it's Brody's wisdom from Brody to, to round out the offseason. And you're all soft. And you're all soft. And and you play people, that, the people that got offended are soft. Not if you disagree soft. with Brody, you haven't played a team sport. That's what we've learned today. No, no, no. You can disagree with me. It's just if you, you think. You just haven't played a sport. If you think like. <laughs> yeah, if you think that I was like harsh on people, then you're crazy. Have you ever heard of what? Bobby Knight? What? Yeah, what he could have thrown a chair, guys. At least no chairs got thrown. Or I could have like humiliated people and like called them out for like being for like I'm not, not throwing a bad that. shot. I'm not gonna say that. You know? I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say it. Well, hopefully next week we'll have some stories to to kick the show off and end it with. If you want your story read on air, be sure to click the link in the description down below. Submit that or topics, and we will talk to you again next week. Appreciate y'all. Go check out the Imposter Disc Golf series.